Hey folks, welcome back to part three of my deck collection series. This is the second portion of my animal decks and this is the oracle portion because as I stated, if you didn't previously watch the other one, I have quite a few animal decks. What I would say is if you're not familiar with the series or myself, then if you watch part one, I briefly explain a little bit about why I'm doing this, how I approach tarot, how I feel about the amount of decks I have, that kind of thing. And I'll probably reflect on it towards the end of this series as well. I have eight more to film. <laughs> so... It's going to be a thing, but we're getting through it. We're getting through it. Let's jump straight in with none other than the medicine cards because it is my OG. It is my first deck ever and it is a big deal. I've spoken about the medicine cards endlessly on here, so it may actually be one of my shorter discussions. But needless to say, this was my first introduction to decks and animals being in decks. I was very young, my mum had a copy of it. I can't remember, but I think she had the original. They later came out with the revised one, which has a bunch more cards in it. So this is 52 in total. It's definitely the thing that really early on inspired me to study animals as well as engaging with them myself, coming from parents who are very animal fond themselves. So between the two of them and this deck, it really stemmed a love that, as I say, now has bloomed into many areas of my life, including the way that I approach wildlife and the way I educate myself, my workings with animal medicine entirely infusing my witchcraft, but yeah, I've had this since I was little. This is the copy that I've had since I was young anyway. And I have a backup copy of this because if it had ever gone out of print whilst I could totally live without it, I would be really sad. And then after years of searching, I managed to get this, which is heavily out of print. And this is their mini version. This is only the original amount of cards so 40 something but they're not numbered there's a title card in there somewhere <laughs> yeah. this goes out for journeys with me mostly to the duck pond nowadays i'm not really out in the forests and as you can see the difference is that it's got these little key messages at the bottom because there was no guidebook that came with this one and I absolutely adore it. As I say, it took me years to find it because it's out of print and also I didn't want to pay silly money for it. And between those two things, it's nigh on impossible to get a hold of one. It's incredibly beloved. It does feel very different to the main one to me. Yeah, it just it does have a little bit of a different vibe to it and it has this extra card. Other than that, there's not much to say. There are a few of my key repeating animals from over years and years of workings that actually aren't in this one because they're from the revised but I freaking love this I was so excited to get it I'm not sure I've been more excited in in terms of card stuff anyway next we have the wild unknown animal spirit oracle and I can't remember if this was a Christmas present for 2015 or 16 but I hadn't bought many decks during a long period of time I had been using some but not buying them and then I stumbled on Tarot's social media land in a far bigger way beyond YouTube and I had already ordered the wild unknown but then found out this existed so they came around the same time but from different sellers I was really excited for the different animals. It was the second animal oracle deck that I'd ever owned after working solely with the medicine cards for so long. Again, I'm a big fan of Kim's art style. So 
it's a bit of a thing for me. I really like the specific and mostly, I guess, infrequent use of colour. I feel like it's it adds something in particular. I appreciate her line work. I was excited to explore the animals that I hadn't in a deck before. And at the time, I remember being quite intrigued by the elemental associations. Not so much anymore, but it was fun to explore that. I mostly ignore them now, if I'm honest. But art-wise, and as I say, the other selection of animals, I really, really appreciate this deck. I've enjoyed using it a lot. It does have a few cards, uh, Black Egg, I think Golden Egg maybe, Cosmic Egg, uh, Phoenix, Unicorn, they're the spirit element. Whilst they're not my favourite and I tend towards everyday living and breathing animals of any kind, I don't mind because each time a deck does this, it does kind of give them a nuance and something a little different to work with. At the same time, I feel like if I wanted to, and if anyone else wanted to, taking out the rest of that spirit section wouldn't make a difference whatsoever. This deck would work fine without it. It hasn't even got numbers on, so it wouldn't upset anyone. But yeah, this was another one that was really heavily used and just allowed me to step into this new world that otherwise had been dominated by the medicine cards for just such a long time. Now this wee one is an absolute favourite of mine. In fact, I'm going to put them down because this is, this is a slippery little bugger. And this is the 100 Ink Animals. This is by a dear friend of mine, Jess, and this originally wasn't meant to be a tarot, uh, sorry, an oracle deck. This was very much as it sounds, a project to draw something once a day, every day for a hundred days. I think it was later that people sort of reached out and said about creating it into an oracle deck. Now, one of the reasons that drew me to this, and I later made friends with Jess, I found the deck first, is that not only does it have a really interesting variety of animals, and also a hundred, which is always a big bonus for me. The more animals, the better in one deck, because it leaves me feeling like I've got more range. I was really intrigued by the write-ups and the fact that Jess was one of the not only people but one of the fewer people that I'd seen who seemed to really be interested in the animal's behaviour and had researched various aspects of their behaviour and woven that into the message as one of the dominant parts and I really respected that about the process it's more in line with how I work the keywords aren't the usual sort of almost tired cliches that we see on animal decks nowadays and that's nothing against them because they keep getting pigeonholed into a certain nuance of their behavior it then means that people who don't associate them with that or once they've seen it you know one two three times people either get bored don't feel connected to it you name it and i find that the keywords in here are very balanced Again, very, very interesting variety, just an out and out fantastic creation. I have waxed lyrically about it for long enough. The hundredth card is actually the creator and they included themselves because of course we are animals and as much as we like to distance ourselves from this knowing, there's something really powerful about remembering this and important. So big inclusion for me, love that adore this deck. Now for a few decks that have animals that are local to me, unless this has a bear, so it'll be animals that are local to me or were local to me. This is called the Beasts of Albion and was a gift, possibly the second, the, the, I can't remember if it was the first or second deck ever sent to me by someone on Instagram who merely out of the kindness of their heart reached out to me and said 
you really love animals and animal decks this isn't vibing with me can i gift it to you and i was entirely blown away really excited i know some people find this quite gaudy i've said before i really enjoy it and naturally because i live around these animals because i see them all the time after starting out with the medicine cards for so many years and working and focusing at least deck wise with a lot of animals that aren't native to me at all having a deck where they were felt again really novel the artwork is definitely my kind of vibe it does have a really weird structure to this deck that is available i don't know if you can tell but it's three suit colors as much as i've studied the structure it's not something that feels natural to me at the moment, even after years of owning this, but it doesn't affect my use of the deck at all. I don't even pay any mind or attention to the border colours. I love seeing a spider that I can literally walk out into my garden and see. It does have three mythical creatures in it. We've got the unicorn, the dragon, and I knew it would have bear on it. I can't remember the other mythical creature now. Um, oh, it's not mythical, sorry, per se. It is very much alive and breathing, but not local. It's a lion. I can't remember if they're the top aspects of their suits or the key aspects, but anyway, I leave them in there. I don't mind them. Again, not my favourite, but overall, this feels like a really homely deck for me. And that's something that I enjoy. I don't use this one much elsewhere in terms of reading for others. This is quite a personal one, but it is one that I thoroughly enjoy. And my second ever one with animals that are native to my region is the Druid Craft Animal Oracle. Will Worthington artwork? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> probably quite a few of the same animals to the other ones but this one has dragons and whilst I'm not massively into mythical creatures in my decks overall although I do like mythical creatures I love this as well um I don't know I can't remember if they definitely did this on a Scottish wild cat but it definitely gives me those feelings and vibe especially based on the size I know a lot of people commented on this saying that they felt that it was quite aggressive for cat but wild cats are a completely different story and my assumption is they're not looking to show the domesticated version of the animal so very fitting uh but yes back to mythical animals i am i like to see them in books and read myth about them i'm just not that bothered about them being in my decks but this one has the four dragons in their elemental forms. So again, I leave them in because it's good fun. There's not really much to add about this one other than this does get used more so with people who I've done readings for or not so much with Patreon pools, but certainly people have requested readings with this one in particular and I'm always happy to oblige. Like I say, it feels very familiar to me. It's a nice one to have for other people who live locally. And I think that Will Worthington's artwork should be everywhere, really. <laughs> Just everywhere. Now for a huge deck and a deck that predominantly I chose for the artwork. This is the Spirit of the Animals Oracle. I believe I've got that right. It's by Jodie Bergsma, just in case. This has the most breathtaking artwork. There's a real visceral experience that I fall into when I pull these cards. I don't mind the keywords on most of them. One of the reasons why I sat on whether to get this deck for such a long time, however, is the write-ups. And the reason being is sometimes what's on the card feels very unspecific, kind of, not always, but has a little bit of a fluffy edge to it. It's kind of a bit too nice <laughs> for me, 
just in case people aren't understanding what I mean by fluffy. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just not the way that I approach animals or their behaviour or their medicine whatsoever. I don't mind if it's really nourishing and nurturing. It just it felt a bit new age spiritual in places for me, which isn't really quite my taste. But the book's actually better and of course because I've been working with most of these animals or will research them time and time again anyway if I'm not familiar with them the book isn't much of a big deal and when it came down to it whilst these cards are freaking huge I knew that I would love seeing the artwork on my altar I knew that they would get a lot of use based on the animals that were in them and also there's quite a lot of wildcats in this particular deck, which I am a big fan of. But look at the character and the time that went into this artwork. And I wouldn't suggest that Jodie Bergsma doesn't have a connection with them. It doesn't feel like she just made an animal deck to make an animal deck because it was kind of in. Now I don't know much about her background and occasionally there definitely seems to be some cultural influences um but there's nothing on the on the front that really suggests any of that it feels quite like i said mostly open to interpretation and i find this a pleasure to work with this one is featured on my patreon a lot because the artwork is very immersive people really engage well with it I do take the dragon and the unicorn out of this one when I'm using it for Patreon. <laughs> Otherwise, if I'm just doing a quick reading for myself, I might leave it in. But they're not really the kind of thing that I want to explore over and over in my animal medicine. This is the Animal Allies Oracle the first one. I don't currently have the second one, but the second one does have entirely different animals in it so you can put them together and create a mega deck which I would love to do at some point. This was a surprise gift from a friend. I hadn't, I don't even think I'd seen it before but I'm not sure and as you can see this one reverts back to having nothing other than the titles on the cards which because I've worked with a many of the animals for long enough and because I enjoy research so much predominantly my focus for researching animals is around their behavior and environment of course that's still our opinion of their behavior but that's where it starts and then I'll extend out into folklore and other tales and myths but I think that the behaviour gives such a solid grounding and because I'm a mega nerd and I enjoy that, not having keywords on the deck isn't really a massive factor for me because even if I'm really familiar with an animal, sometimes I might, if I'm working with them for a while, research some more about them anyway. Uh, other times I just may go off of what I know and like I said, if I don't know, then I have the potential to go and find out. I'm not opposed to keywords on animal decks. And I think that a lot of people starting out benefit from them a lot more. But as I say, wasn't a deal breaker for me. I really enjoy the doodling around the edges. It gives me an art journal vibe. But this was another deck that brought animals to me that I didn't have in my expansive, already existent collection. And that's always fun because whilst you do not need all of the animals in the decks, as I say, this is a big passion of mine. It expands far out of Oracle reading, far out of my craft and into so many realms of my life and interests that that makes sense for me in particular so I'm always on the lookout and this one has a lot of insects which again I appreciate I actually have a list of underrepresented animals in decks I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet I've been working on it for a while but I have a list however this deck definitely did some impressive things which is why the second one seems so exciting as well 
You'll notice a theme when I'm going through the decks, as I say, this one was a gift because it was indeed as well. And that's a big reflection that I already knew way before I started doing this deck collection is that I've been very, very fortunate in terms of gifts from friends. Um, sorry, this is the animal kin oracle before we go any further this is an indie copy of it but there is a mass market version now with slightly larger cardstock and a few minor changes as i was saying also mixed in with the sort of occasional times where i've had streams of people reaching out in terms of reviews so i've got decks that way my collection definitely wouldn't be the size that it is if it were down to just me. So my collection's definitely this size through the generosity of others. And when it is an animal medicine deck, I'll always consider it. I have parted with a decent handful of animal decks, actually. So I don't just keep them all. I definitely don't vibe with them all, believe it or not. <laughs> This one has really beautiful keywords and the creator is someone who, again, there's a lot of behavioural elements in this. There's a lot of study, I feel, that went into this. They're very passionate about animals. I think they actually are now a or were at some point involved in learning about wildlife rescue and rehabilitation and release back into the wild. This is again a really welcome contender and another one that has a lovely amount of cards to really sift through and introduce me to some animals that otherwise I had never researched, never worked with and I love a challenge, <laughs> I love to learn. Now this wee one is teeny tiny and this is the Animantras Oracle. I had to think about whether to put it in here because it's very affirmation based and as you can possibly tell from the colours it's also linked to the chakras which is not something I pay too much attention to most of the time when I use this but the affirmations are based on behavioural links or agreed upon approaches to the various animals and associations to the various animals and in that sense it still works as an animal deck whilst the guidebook is tiny it has a nice little offering in there it's not particularly something that I go to very often but I really enjoy the light-hearted fun just pull one, see what the see what the affirmation or mantra is, whatever you prefer to call it, the keyword, and kind of roll with it. I don't tend to feel the need to expand from them too much because I don't approach this deck in the same way that I approach some of my others. I may even pull like three or four cards, which is a, a nice way to build upon some intentional focus just some meditative words there's a lot of creative ways that because of the design and the approach that it could actually be utilized and spark that maybe people might not feel is so accessible or so easy to come by with some of the other decks it's just really cute the creator sent it to me as a gift and it was it was quite a surprise. I think we had briefly had a back and forth about something and I was delighted with it. I don't mind a bit of cute, fun charm occasionally. It's just not really my go-to and I'm extra fussy about it. But this is cute in all capacities and so, so darn tiny that I just... I just couldn't not. <laughs> it's a uh, it's remained a keeper. The final four decks move on to one animal only, although that's very broad in this sense because this is the birds oracle 
one and two they are mixed in together and they will never be unmixed the boxes are in storage i will get a bag for them at some point they are kind of rose petal so i had to get my shit together <laughs> and spin them around but i'm back this is the card that led me down the path of wanting the first version of this deck and yes pigeons and doves same thing I've had this conversation in length with people but pigeons have a really bad name <laughs> and you had the rock doves that came from a certain place and then they kind of intermingled with other pigeons and we've got a lot of feral pigeons very very common if you go to somewhere like London I think London's often very renowned for like the pigeons at Trafalgar Square but they get such a bad rap and I have a very big long time connection with pigeons it's a story that I have told people many a time that is something my stepmom and I share pigeons just find us we've rescued pigeons in the strangest places at the most inconvenient times I have a really deep affinity for them. I'm very fond of the ones nesting in our garden. And I really wanted a beautiful representation of Pigeon that wasn't the Ten of Swords out of the Animal Totem Tarot, which I love, but it's a very sad representation of poor Pigeon. The fact that this then has all of these other birds to explore is really delicious to me and the artist was someone I was following already so then I found the creator I think that the artwork is stunning the creator is very much a bird lover spends a lot of time or did before the creation of these decks traveling and meeting these birds in the wild and the books kind of tell more stories of them through that lens as opposed to always behavioural stuff but it's really interesting approach wise it does something different it does something really unique and authentic to the creator so of course I don't know all of the birds and I'm not familiar with them but again I will just enjoy the study when I use this deck and then most of the time I remember for the next time around when I pull them. Three more decks to go and you guessed it, this is feathers, not birds. But where else was I going to put this deck? A friend sent this to me because I'm always collecting feathers. I've done videos on feathers. It's a thing with me. They're a big part of my practice and very easy for me to find locally at the moment they're the one thing that I can actually forage for so very very excited about getting a look at this deck and seeing the beautiful photography its name is birdkin messages I believe I had never seen it before I never see it around they're very simple affirmation based messages in the book so the book isn't particularly my kind of thing always and I don't use it too too much but as you can imagine more reasons to enjoy feathers it is handy occasionally as a guide to look at a feather I'm pretty good at IDing anything locally now anyway but I get to enjoy feathers that I otherwise wouldn't see because they're birds that aren't native and it's just another invitation to fall down a moment of researching on the internet or in books and the last two are you guessed it cat decks this deck is fucking hilarious it's called cat gurus it's got the pets of i suppose famous people celebrities throughout the ages and it has these quippy little very cat-like or how we imagine cats to be comments at the bottom of them and whilst it's whimsical and funny as hell it can be quite a punchy reader so you have three options but I tend to read all three the signs are broken down in the book but I can't remember what they represent now it's better to give than receive unless the gift is chosen by a cat Never look a gift mouse in the mouth. 
be prepared for all your hard work to go underappreciated. Cute deck doesn't lie. <laughs> This is exactly what the cats wanted you to know. Sam Warhol, as you guessed it, Andy Warhol's cat, he actually had a number of Siamese cats, I believe. And I think something kooky, like they were all called Sam, I can't remember. We have a few, like the Cheshire cat that was in story as opposed to celebrity. Pussy cat. <laughs> I think this is possibly the f one of the funniest decks that I own and yet never once have I pulled this and thought oh that message is weak or not relevant or I couldn't do something with it and that's interesting so we've got the cat she we actually studied the cat she I want to say end of last year on Patreon I can't remember Dick Whittington's cat. I'm assuming this has got something to do with Shakespeare. So you can see they're quite whimsical, playful pictures. But yeah, punchy messages. Not much else to say about this one, to be honest. It goes away for quite a while sometimes. And then it comes out and it just gets used like nobody's business. People really love it on Instagram Live. I think that because it's cats and because it's kind of cute and whimsical, even when it's delivering a bit of a difficult message, it's kind of a, a beautiful mix of like sweet and salt at the same time. And people are into it. It's definitely not just me. And last but definitely not least is my sweet, sweet Spirit Cats Oracle, which I am going to show you the back of because that's where the messages are. They have a keyword and then Nicole created this beautiful story based on each of her art pieces that encapsulates the keyword and expands on it. So your meaning is on the back. To those wondering, I've never had a problem with having meanings or messages or anything written on the back of my cards. I don't feel like I am seeing them before I pull. As has come to no surprise to most of you, I'm a bit of a cat lady. I'd like one of these with foxes next. <laughs> or pigeons, that would be cool. Whimsical, magical, cute, witchy, all of those key phrases. I do like that they give me a certain energy when I look at these pictures in particular. I get a sort of, I guess, story moment of my own before I flip them over. I do know some of them now very, very well from them coming out for me so often. So I already know what's to be said, what they mean. I don't think that they are traps in that however what i would say is if people are feeling kind of low or particularly having a challenging time this is one of those decks where there's often an avenue or a sweet offering or almost like a hug or a pat on the shoulder offered within the message that probably makes it a deck that's far more approachable and has some hug like qualities to it but for me, it's like entering into this perfect dream world of cats as as fate, I suppose. It feels really fate to me still, actually, just in a much gentler capacity than my actual fae workings and my fae decks. <laughs> Which is surprising because I would say that uh, cats can definitely be up there with the fey overall. But this is definitely the, the gentler approach. And there you have it. That is my animal oracles. There may be a few that you see definitely in my nature animistic kind of section where there's still quite a dominant amount of animals in them but they won't be solely animal decks which is why they weren't here i'm curious to know if there's anything that you haven't seen before because i feel like there might be in this particular selection or any of your thoughts really 
thank you for hanging out with me yet again for another one of these and yeah eight more to go see you soon